Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve, where is it? it is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get to use those, you get to use those of personal initiative. That is that go-getter energy where you just get tired of sitting around waiting for things to happen. And you just start going and making things happen. Uh, you know what that feeling feels like. You've been there before. Maybe you're there right now. And we put all these elements together for you. And in the fusion of all of this, we create one approach, one lifestyle, one framework, one way of being, a way of thinking, a way of producing. We wrote a book on this subject and we have this daily masterclass is what you're listening to right now. That is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to get and receive respect. Respect. Is there a process to this? Is there a, is there a framework for this? The answers are yes and yes. That's why we're talking about it here today. Let me give a definition of this word respect. It's a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. So would you like other people to feel deep admiration for you because of the abilities that you display, some qualities of yours that they notice, or some achievements that you have? And by the same token, since by the law of reciprocity, would you like to be the type of person who can elicit these kind of feelings in other people? I don't mean the feelings of them respecting you, but this is the feelings of them knowing that you respect them. Because usually when someone shows respect for another person is because that person is showing respect for them. We usually reciprocate the kind of energy that we're receiving. Now, somebody could have fear for a person who doesn't show them respect, but it's not actually respect. It's a different fear and respect are two different things. And of course, you know, things like liking and disliking, completely different things. So this whole thing with respect is not just about what you receive from other people, but do you want to also make sure that you're able to give it so that other people feel that you're respecting them? And when you show other people respect, usually they show it back to you. All right? There may be some blips on the radar, and again, depending on your situation and who you are and what you've been through. But usually when you're showing other people respect, for the most part, you're going to get it back. So let's, ex let's talk about and explore how this actually happens. And before we do that, let me tell you I have a text line where I want you to text me and tell me which of these elements of respect do you feel like you most need to make sure you're enacting in your life or you need to brush up on and make sure that you're utilizing more often to make sure that your respect level, both for others and from others, remains where it needs to be. Text me at 305-384-6894 and let me know what that is. Again, 305-384-6894. Point number one, topic again, how to give and receive respect. Stay in control of yourself. One thing that you don't want to do and one, one aspect of or one... We don't even want to call it an aspect, but one thing that any of us as human beings, all of us have done it before. We don't plan to, but all of us have done it before. One thing that can really uh, shake the foundation of respect that other people have for you is when people notice you losing control. People notice you losing your cool or losing your, your kind of presence of mind or just getting out of your own frame of calmness and measured energy. And all of us have different baseline levels of energy, but when we fall out of our frame of calmness and measuredness and we kind of start to lose control and people notice that, it's harder for them to respect us because they see what kind of you know, got us out of our balance. While we all may, as I said, step out of control at times, some of us more than others, and I'm sure you may know some people who step out of control all the time and to the point that maybe that's their normal baseline, the goal is for all of us that we want to stay in control as much as possible. And when I say in control, just in control of ourselves, not in control of others or in control of circumstances. When you lose control and other people see that, it's harder for them to look at you the same way because they saw you kind of get out of balance. They saw you lose your calm. They saw you lose your cool. And it's hard to respect the person who can't even control their own selves. So how do they don't respect themselves enough to keep control? So why should we show them respect? whether that's in, their, in your words, the way that you talk, or in your deeds, the actions that you have. The one place that I would refer you to that can offer you some really deep analysis on this that can help you look inside yourself would be the 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. He has a chapter in there called Maintaining Your Presence of Mind Amidst the Turmoil of Events because in life, we can't control events. 
and very rarely can we control other people. So there are going to be things that occur in our lives that we didn't expect, that we did not see coming, that we don't want to be occurring, yet we can't stop them from being what they are. How do you maintain your presence of mind when those things are happening? Or do you lose control? Do you just fly off the handle? Do you fall to pieces? What do you do when those situations occur? Because you, you're old enough to know that in life, these things are going to happen, even though you may not want them to happen, even though you would do all you can to make them stop happening. You can't stop them. It's like trying to stop the rain when the clouds start opening up. What are you going to do in those situations? The key is to prepare yourself to maintain your presence of mind. And a couple of exercises that we've mentioned before here on this show that I want to remind you of that can help you prepare for these situations because many times we don't see them coming. They just happen and then we got to deal with it in a moment. One of them is meditation and the whole practice. Another one is yoga. I'll give you both at the same time. Both of them are practices. There's a meditation practice and there's a yoga practice. There's no science to yoga or science to meditation, meaning there's no quote unquote right or wrong way to do these things. The whole purpose of them is for you to practice centering yourself, practice being under control, practice breathing, practice being calm, practice uh, letting your mind go still so that when you get in situations in life, when things are the exact opposite of what I just described, things are not calm, things are not still, things are not relaxed, it's not the type of situation where you can breathe deep and just be calm. Right, the more you practice doing those things, when something comes up that's the exact opposite of that, the closer you are to the baseline of staying calm and staying relaxed. So this is how meditation and yoga, these are just two examples, and there may be other things that people do, but meditation and yoga, everyone's familiar with them, even if you've never done them before, these can help you to maintain control even when you're in situations that are very far from meditative and yogic, if you understand what I'm saying. Let's move on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to get and receive respect. So before I even go on to point number two, I want you to just read between the lines. I'm going to read between the lines of what I said in point number one. It wasn't really about other people. Point number one is really about how can you just stay centered? How can you just stay relaxed? How can you stay calm? I heard a business coach, Alex Sharfman, say that in situations where there is turmoil or where there's turbulence going on or things are just not, there's an anxiety inducing, stress inducing situations going on. The calmest person in the room is usually the one that everybody follows. The calmest person in the room becomes the leader. And this isn't any situation in life. This doesn't have to be in business. This could be on a sports team. This can be in a situation in the street. This can be in a family situation. Just It could be a bunch of strangers together. The calmest person in the room when everybody else is going crazy is the one that everybody's following, the one that everybody's listening to. And I've I've heard this from people from all different walks. Robert Greene talks about it. And Robert Greene just writes about personal, he writes about um, human nature and just how humans interact and human psychology. Alex Sharfman's a business coach. He's talked about it explicitly. Uh, Tim Grover, who wrote the book Relentless, he's talked about this. He has a chapter in his, his first book, Relentless, where he says, when everybody is panicking and hitting the emergency button, they're all looking at you. And the reason that they're looking at you Tim didn't say this explicitly, but the, I'm going to say it. The reason that they're looking at you is because you are the calmest person. You're the one who gets more relaxed, the more crazy everything gets. I heard a uh, sports psychology coach, a guy by the name of George Mumford. He coached with, well, he was hired by Phil Jackson. To, and Phil Jackson, by the way, was an NBA legendary coach, coached Michael Jordan and the Bulls, coached Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal and the LA Lakers. And George Mumford talked about how when he worked with the Chicago Bulls via Phil Jackson, who brought him in to coach the team or offer some sports psychology to the team, he said Michael Jordan is, of course, every time he gets interviewed, everybody asks him about Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. And he said the, the more crazy things got around the Chicago Bulls, the more calm Michael Jordan became. And this was just his outside observation of Michael Jordan. It's like this guy was just the more crazy things were and how everybody else was getting all anxious. Michael Jordan just got more and more relaxed. And that's one of the things that makes you more of a leader and it makes people respect you even more because they see how calm you can stay while everybody else is kind of losing their heads. Now let's go to point number two. The topic, once again, is how to give and receive respect. Let people be who they are. If you want people to respect you, you have to respect them. As I just said, there's the law of reciprocity, or as I said in the intro, the law of reciprocity in life is... And goes along with the law of karma. Everyone's familiar with that, right? The energy you put out is the energy that you get back. So if you allow people to be who they are, you are less judgmental of people. 
you accept people and you accept all their quirks and their idiosyncrasies and things about them that you may not necessarily agree with, when they see that you accept them, they will more readily accept you and they will respect you and appreciate you for allowing them to be who they are around you. We all know that respect is a give and take, as I just said, reciprocity, the law of karma. It's hard to respect someone, I'm talking for you personally, you can't respect people who don't respect you for who you are. Even though you may obey them, depending on who they are, maybe as a parent, maybe as a boss, a supervisor, someone who just has more authority than you, and in certain situations, you, might, you may respect their authority and you will you know, obey and you know, let them you know, have their power and control and their little victories in the moment, but you don't respect someone who doesn't respect you for being the type of person that you are. On the, by the same token, if you are not allowing someone to be who they are and they can tell that you're not respecting who they are, then they're not gonna respect you. Again, they might listen to you, they might follow you, they might obey you, they will bend to your will and your authority if you have such authority in a situation, but they don't respect you. Those are two completely different things. So my point is here, number two, is you gotta let people be who they are around you. So many of us, all of us actually, put on a mask every day when we go out into the world. And I don't mean a, a COVID mask. I'm not talking about that kind of mask. I'm talking about the mask that we all put on to put our best face forward to the world, whatever face we wanna put forward to the world. Maybe some days we wanna put our worst face forward, but we all have a, we are all pretending on some level. Every single one of us, when we present ourselves to the world, there's some level of pretending that is going on that we want the world to see us a certain way. So being that this is true, that all of us put on this, a mask every day, we need places and people around whom and which we can take off our mask and just be ourselves. We all need this. We all need a place where we don't, you might be the boss all day and every time there's a problem, everybody comes to you all day, but you need a few hours every day after work when you don't have to be the boss anymore. Somebody else can be the boss and you can just relax and you don't have to answer anybody else's question. There may be a situation in your life where you're the quietest one and you don't have any power and nobody's paying you any mind aside from telling you what to do, but you want some situations in your life where you want to have some power, you want to have some say, you want to be the one who is making those decisions and a whole bunch of energies that are in between that need to be balanced out. So since all of us in life had to put on some sort of mask in order to just get around, around other human beings, we all do this as just part of our social wiring as people. The more you can allow people to be who they really are, not the mask, but who they truly are as a person, the more they'll respect you. And the more people will just be gravi the more people will just gravitate towards you because they know they can relax and be who they are around you because they see that you're not judging them for being you know, whoever they are, which is usually gonna be very different from who everybody else is. And the way that I know, if you wanna know how I know that everybody wears a mask every single day, and again, I'm not talking about a literal mask, is that Every one of us is unique. No, no two fingerprints are exactly the same. Every one of us has a unique set of traits and habits and perspectives and ways of seeing things and ways of doing things. Yet, how many people do you see every day who all seem to be very similar, all seem to be pretty much the same, all seem to have the same opinions and the same habits and doing the same stuff? It's not because it was some, some anomaly and the machine you know, had some bug in it that it produced a whole bunch of people who were exactly the same. No, it's because of our socialization that so many people put on the mask of trying to be what they think is gonna be acceptable, but that's not the real them. So when you have the energy of showing people that you don't judge them for being different, then they will slowly, gradually, this is not an overnight thing, folks, they will gradually come to see that they can just be who they are around you and they'll be comfortable doing it. But you have to give them the energy that you're not judging them for being anything you no know, other than who exactly they are as a person. So your job is to just be tolerant of people's differences, be tolerant of people's perspectives, as long as their differences of perspectives are not violating anybody's rights. As long as they're not violating anyone's civil rights, as long as they're not breaking the law, then be tolerant of people just who are different from you. Point number three, the topic once again, is how to give and receive respect. Honor your work and let your actions speak louder than those words. What do I mean here? What you tell people you'll do, do it. And make sure your actions speak louder than the things that you say. In other words, do more than you talk about doing. If you tell, like we talked about in yesterday's episode, we talked about creating leverage on yourself and committing to something. For example, putting something on the calendar. If you tell 
some people around you that you're going to get something done by Tuesday, make sure you get it done by Tuesday. Even better, get it done by Monday. But don't turn it in on Wednesday and say, oh, my bad, it was a day late. And now you lost a little bit of trust and you lost a little bit of those people's respect because now they know in the back of their minds, even if they don't explicitly, they probably won't say it to you. Maybe a few people, if they're like me, they'll say it to you. But they're, most people are not going to say anything to you. Now, in their mind, they know, all right, next time she or he says something's going to be done by Tuesday, they don't really mean Tuesday because look what they did this time. So you lost a little bit of their respect. Now they know they can't depend on you to meet a deadline because what, you just came up short on your own deadline. Honoring your word. And I want you to really, you really had to be disciplined to keep this one in mind right here, what I'm saying, because when you violate it, most of the time, nobody's going to say anything to you. People are not going to call you out and say, hey, you said it was going to be this day, but it was this day. There are a few people who will. I would say maybe 10 to 20 percent of the population are the type of people who will say to you, yo, you didn't honor your word in this situation. They might not say it in those exact words, but they'll let you know. Most people, though, about 80 percent of people are not going to say anything. But it's not that they didn't notice. It's not that they don't know what happened. It's just they just put it away in the back of their minds and they will make sure not to make that mistake again. As they say, once bitten, twice shot. So whatever you tell people you're going to do, understand that the amount of respect that they have for you will hinge on whether or not you follow through on that or if you don't. When you tell people you'll do something, do it. How many people have you known in your life who are always talking about doing something and then didn't do the thing they said they were going to do? Or even if they did do it, they did significantly less than what they actually advertised. How many times does a person need, in, in your eyes, how many times does somebody need to not follow through on something that they told you they would do for you to stop trusting them? For many people, it's about one time. It's somewhere around one, right? Between zero and one. How many times you need somebody to not follow through before you're like, all right, I'm, I'm good. All right, you might not be mad at them. You might not, you don't hate them. You don't I'll unfollow them on Instagram. And maybe you don't even say anything. Maybe you don't even cuss them out. But at the same time, you know, okay, I can't trust this person in this situation anymore because of what they just showed me. How many times does that need to happen before you're like, okay, that's enough with this person? Now, some of us, depending on, again, your relationships with different people. I know people who continually trust the same people over and over and over and over again, even after this person has shown multiple times. They just keep showing that they, their word is not to be trusted. But I know people who just keep trusting this individual. Any of you know people like that? Or do you know anyone who every time someone makes some type of claim in a certain aspect of life, they keep making the same mistakes with different people, but based on the same topic? For example, you, any of you know a man or a woman who keeps dating the wrong man or woman over and over and over again, and they keep getting burned the exact same way just by different people. So they just have a blind spot in that one particular area of life. Or there are some people, as I said earlier, who have a blind spot with certain people. So they let the same person deceive them over and over and over again to the point that you can't even call it deceit anymore. Now it's just you being stupid because this person has already showed you who they are, yet for whatever reason, you're not listening. Any of you know anybody who fits that description? Maybe it's you. Maybe you're the person who has that blind spot and you're not even noticing the same things that you keep doing over and over again. But this is why you need to have some quality people around you who can point it out to you and you know, tell you your shit to your face. So how many times does a person need to not follow through on something with you before you don't trust them again? Now, how many times do you do it? And then how often do you think other people need you to make that mistake? Point number four. Today's topic is how to give and receive respect. Number four, be honest and direct. And being honest and direct does not mean you have to be outspoken. It doesn't mean you have to be the type of person to call people out because it's fun for you. It doesn't mean you have to be argumentative or the type of person to you know, get into back and forth with people because, again, you are, you're just into the sport of debate. You don't have to be like that. But when you want people to know something, you got to tell them what you want them to know. Tell people what you need them to understand. Uh, sugar, don't sugarcoat what you say. I know a lot of people who I've come across a lot of people and some people who I still know to this day who when they need to express something to another person, they say it, but they sugarcoat it so much that it's clear that people are not even getting the point because they put so much, they put so much sweetener on a statement that they need to make. You understand what I'm saying? Has any of you ever dealt with someone like that who they just, they say something and they get the point across, but they... They soften it up so much that it's unclear if the recipient even got the point. And when I hear people doing that, 
I'll call them out on it. I'll say to them, like, yeah, like, you said it, but I don't think they even understood what you said because you, you, you took so much of this thing off but trying to be a nice person. And sometimes these people can be called or accused of being people pleasers, the type of individuals who don't want to piss anybody off. They don't want to ruffle any feathers. They don't want to get into arguments. They don't like any type of confrontation, at least on some levels. So they will sweeten everything that they say to the point that people don't even remember what you were trying to get across because you tried so hard to please everybody. It's hard to be respected or at least have your word respected when you won't even say what needs to be said, especially to people who need to hear it. Now, I understand it can be really annoying when someone does this, when they sweeten what they say and they soften their points. And I know it is for me, and that's why I'm pointing it out here today, to deal with people who don't say exactly what they mean. They sugarcoat things, add softener to every statement so as to not offend others. So they can, they can send a friendly person, the nice guy or nice girl, the one who's cool with everybody. The problem with this habit is that people don't even get your message when you dress it up too much. When you dress up your message so much that it goes in one ear and not the other, it's, it's so diluted that people don't even get the medicine. You understand what I'm saying? It's like taking cough syrup and pouring it into a liter of water and then drinking a whole liter of water and then saying you took cough syrup. Well, really, you didn't because you diluted it so much that the medicine doesn't even have the same power. So if you want to receive respect, you got to make sure people are actually getting your communication. And sometimes that might mean uh, hitting them upside the head with something that maybe might be might jolt them a little bit, might surprise them a little bit with your directness and the way that you go straight to the point with what you need to say. But understand, even though people may not appreciate it so much in the moment, depending on what you're talking about and who they are, they will respect it in the long run. Point number five. Today's topic, once again, is how to give and receive respect. Be kind, yet fair. Going off of what we just talked about in point number four, yes, you can be a nice person and be nice about what you're saying to someone. You're not saying things to people, even when you're telling them something that uh, may be critical of them, you're not saying it because you're trying to hurt them or that you're trying to destroy them, but at the same time, you need to make sure they understand what you're saying. Right? Again, it doesn't mean you have to be a jerk about it. You're not trying to destroy somebody, but you gotta be clear so that you know that they know what you're communicating. One of the biggest mistakes people can make in communication is just a lack of clarity. People don't know exactly what you're saying. If any of you has ever, think of the last time you clicked on an advertisement, whether it was something you saw on social media, or you called the phone number, or you got some you know, junk mail, or it wasn't junk mail to you because you called it, whatever the advertisement was, good advertising is very clear. Good advertising, the key to good advertising is clarity. The, good, the key to good copy, sales copy, is clarity. Those of you who know what copy is, that's the verbiage that someone uses when they're trying to influence you to take an action. So for example, if someone makes a video and they're trying to get you to go to their website based on that video that they posted on Facebook, that is copy. If someone writes advertising and they want you to click on their link to go get their free book or something, that is copy. And then everything that is on that page that you go to, that is also known as sales copy. The key to great sales copy, the key to great influential activity, influencing period in life is clarity. You can't influence somebody if they're confused as to what it is you're actually trying to say. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Well, not everyone, again, not everyone may appreciate you in the moment when you are being very clear on what you're saying to them. They will respect you and respect it in the long run. And if you want to show someone else respect and you're communicating with them, the best way you can respect them is to make clear what you're saying to them so that you know that they know exactly what you want them to understand. Trying to sugarcoat it, again, may make you feel good in a moment and make them feel good in a moment, but are you really helping them in the long run if they didn't even get what you were trying to tell them? I don't think so. Let's recap today's class, which is how to give and receive respect. The definition of respect, again, is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by that person's or that thing's abilities, qualities, or achievements. Number one, stay in control of yourself. Now, we all will lose control at different points in our lives, some more than others. The goal is you want to stay there as much as possible. Read the 33 Strategies of War, specifically the chapter on maintaining your presence of mind, and find yourself in meditation and a yoga practice. Point number two, let people be who they are. All of us wear masks all day, every day to get, on, get around and get along socially. When you show people that they don't have to have on such a heavy mask around you, they will slowly peel that mask off and slowly show who they truly are as a person, everyone being unique. 
when they know that they will not be judged, at least in a, not in a negative way, and they will be respected for being who they are as a person. Point number three, honor your word and let your actions speak louder than those words. When you tell people you'll do something, do it and actually be even better than your talk or right? never let your talk equal up to or surpass your actions. How many times does a person need to not follow through on their words before you stop trusting them? All right, same thing with other people when they're looking at you. Number four, be honest and direct. Tell people what you want them to know. Now, this can be annoying when you probably know this, when someone doesn't tell you exactly what they want you to know because they're trying to sugarcoat things, they're trying to please you, they don't want to piss anybody off. Depending on the type of person you are, actually, it might make you happy because you don't want to be told things directly. But if you're somebody like myself, I hate when people sugarcoat things when they're talking to me because I'm like, Yo, just say what you need to say. I can take it. There's nothing you're going to say that's going to bother me that much. Say what needs to be said. It's hard for me to respect the person, maybe for you as well, when they try to soften everything because they're just trying to be the nice guy or nice girl and be friendly with everyone. Sometimes in life, you just got to be direct and people take it however they take it. And point number five, be kind yet fair. It doesn't mean when you're telling people what they need to know, it doesn't mean that you have to be a jerk about it. You're not trying to destroy people or hurt them for no reason, but you do need to be clear as to what you are communicating so that everyone knows exactly where you stand. Now, again, not everybody's going to appreciate that in the moment, but they will respect it and they will respect you in the long run for doing so. So of these five points that I gave you here today, which one do you most need to start utilizing right now to increase the amount of respect you are giving and receiving in your life? Send me a text. My number is 305-384-6894. 305-384-6894. And tell me what that is. Work on your game. Dre all day.